Okay, let's go over the, uh, the calculations involved in this. So we're going to be using that Q equals MC delta T equation. So that's our basic equation, and we're going to be using it in several different situations. So Q equals MC delta T. So the basic idea here is we've got our calorimeter, and in that calorimeter we're going to have some water. So there's some cold water in there. And then we're going to put a piece of hot metal in there, chunk of metal, okay, and that's going to be hot. So each of these things has a mass. We have a mass for the metal. We have an initial temperature for the metal. We're going to have a final temperature for the metal. We're going to have a specific heat for the metal. The cold water also has temperatures and mass. And so we've got mass for the cold water. The cold water has an initial temperature. The cold water has a final temperature. And the cold water has a specific heat capacity. We're going to for right now, I'm going to ignore the calorimeter. The heat gained by the cold water plus the heat gained by the, I'm sorry, lost by the hot metal has to add up to zero. So the heat lost by the metal, because that was the hot thing, it's cooling down, it's giving off heat. The water is cold, it's absorbing heat, and its temperature is going up. So those Q's have to be equal to each other, but opposite in sign. So in this part, this is the experiment, it's the second part. The first part is calibrating, and we'll talk about that in a minute. In the second part, we are finding the specific heat capacity of the metal. So we want, this is what we want to find is this right here. So the specific, the, the heat lost by the metal equals its mass times its specific heat capacity times its change in temperature. The, the temperature of the metal starts out to be high and the temperature of the water starts out to be low, but what happens at the end? They will be the same. They will come to the same temperature. So these are the things you're going to measure. You're going to measure the mass of the water and the metal. You're going to measure the initial temperature of both and the final temperature of both. And then you can calculate this. Because we don't know what Q is, but we know that the red Q has to equal the blue Q with a negative sign. because those have to be opposite of each other in order for them to add up to zero. Does that make sense? What the one gives off, the other one takes in. So we can calculate the Q for the metal from the information we have for the water because we know the specific heat capacity of water. It's 4.1 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius.
So for the water, Q equals MC delta T. We know all of these values. We measure them. We measure the mass of the water. We know what the specific heat capacity is. We know what the final and the initial temperatures are, and so we calculate what Q is. Then we just change the sign, and that gives us the, the Q for the hot metal. So rearranging that equation, we would rearrange that because we're trying to calculate C for the metal. C for the metal equals Q over M delta T, which is the same as negative Q for the water over MC delta T. One of those delta T's is going to be negative because something is cooling down. The final temperature is lower than the initial temperature. So you do have to watch out for the signs on these things because we're caring about whether it's positive or negative. Any questions? You know, this is a, this is a lab that's really hard for you to understand. The math itself is not hard. It's just not getting lost in where we're going that's hard. Yes. Right. So we don't use the Q caliber? Well, I was trying to keep it simple. Uh huh. I think I got lost when we did that. The, the Q cal lost you on YouTube or the not having it the here? YouTube. Okay. Because right here it makes more sense. Okay. YouTube well, that's why I thought, well, I'm going to try leaving it out this time uh -huh. to see if it makes more sense. So let's grasp the simple concept and then throw in the little complicating okay. factor. So the fact is that the calorimeter is going to absorb a little bit of the heat. And so, you know, if we want a really good result, we can't just ignore that and pretend it doesn't happen. So this equation really is a little bit more complicated. The, the heat lost by the hot metal and the heat gained by the cold water and the heat gained by the cup have to add up to zero. So these are both increasing. Whoops. Those, those two together, those are taking energy in. And the book really didn't talk about this, which is unfortunate. The sign of Q. When energy is coming in, we learned that that's an endothermic process, right? Well, then Q has a positive sign. So how do you remember that? Well, think about money and your wallet. When money comes into your wallet, is that positive or negative? That's positive. That's good. When money leaves your wallet, that's a negative thing. So when energy leaves something, Q is negative. The energy is going out. It's an exothermic process. So in this situation, red Q for the hot metal, the hot metal is cooling down. It's losing energy. That Q is going to be negative. The calorimeter and the cold water are warming up. They're going to have a positive Q. Because we can't have three positives and add up to zero. At least one of these has to be negative, right? So we do have to account for the fact that the calorimeter is going to absorb a little bit of water. We don't know how much it's not going to absorb water. Energy. It's going to absorb energy. It's going to absorb heat. Don't know why it keeps doing that. So we don't, you can't look up the specific heat capacity of this particular calorimeter in a textbook. You can't. So we have to figure out what it is. And so the first part of this lab is called calibration of the calorimeter. And so what we do there is we use two things that we know the specific heat capacity of. So we're going to use hot water and cold water. 
but the cues, the, the, the blue for cold and the red for hot and the black for the calorimeter, all of this stuff is still the same. We're going to have a mass of hot water and a mass of cold water. And this is what the pre-lab question was about. And we can calculate, in this situation, we can calculate Q cold, the blue one. We can calculate Q hot. So we measure the masses of each. We measure the final and initial temperatures of each. We know the specific heat capacity. So we can calculate both of those Qs we know that all three of these Qs have to add up to zero. So we're missing one. We can find out what Q for the calorimeter is. And I can't remember if I changed this last. I'm going to make, um, I hope this isn't confusing. It's meant to make things simpler. I'm going to make one little change on how we calculate these things. Because the mass of this calorimeter is going to be the same in our beginning and our ending, we really don't have to... Um, we'll, we'll deal with that when we deal with it. We're going to calc... You can calculate Q... Just scratch that part, that all that mumbling. Um, so we can calculate Q for the calorimeter using that big equation up here, this guy. Not that guy. This one. Okay. So I anticipate that we are going to have a lot of questions. Okay. The actual doing of the experiment is really quite simple. It really is. It's one of the simpler ones. It's the numbers and what to do with the numbers that get complicated.